Friends, welcome back to wait a minute hold on Bubba, what you doing here? It's not time for a size comparison today. Ah! Hello, my friends, and welcome back to Player Display. So today we're looking at the Star Wars The Black Series Star Wars Obi-Wan Kenobi Walmart exclusive 1JAC, better known by his fan base of seven people as One Jack! I don't know why. I just love that guy's name. It just sounds like he should be part of a fighting game or something like that. I don't know. It just has a certain ring to it. One Jack! <laughs> this guy released about a year ago, so why exactly am I reviewing him now? Well, there's a little bit of a talking point that I wanted to bring to the floor if no one else has already. As we know, whenever something is called a Walmart exclusive, that is usually code for, first of all, you ain't gonna get it, and second, if you do get it, you're gonna be out of mortgage or rent for the next six months, pretty much. Give me your money! But not the case for this one. In the case of one Jack over here, he was, of course, a uh, paid scalper on eBay, like 60 bucks, like triple the price or something. But now the price has since gone down, which basically means you can get him for a stock price. <laughs> and you know me, I love my scum and villainy, uh, bounty hunters, scoundrels, and all of that. And I love any killer droids. I love your IGs, I love your HKs, I love your LOMs. In this case, we get our second LOM unit. The first being, of course, for LOM, as he appeared in Empire Strikes Back. We'll do a size comparison a little bit later, but as for now, we'll just do a quick little look around at this one jack over here. Looking up a little bit more closely, you can see this figure once again in this old wave packaging. I don't know if this packaging is going to continue on because they said they were doing the green boxes, then they switched back to the plastic boxes, apparently. I don't know what that's going to look like, if they're going to look like this again, or if they're going to try something brand new. But everything's as you expect. Black Series, one jack! Then you have Obi-Wan Kenobi. On the side, you have a very nice image of One Jack once again, along with somebody's shoulder. I don't know who, so you could probably get him alongside everyone else to complete that mosaic if you like. Off to the side, continued window. On the back, you have your multilingual bios, which is basically just the plot of the show. Of course, when they were releasing these toys as promos, they didn't want to give too much plot away out of the gate. As you look at the top, I will say there was one more exclusive from Walmart, being the Perch Trooper Phase 2, to be more exact, who is a little bit more hard to find, and I will not be going after him, just because I prefer the Phase 1 version that we got from Fallen Order, and I got both versions of those. Off to the bottom, you know the drill, come on. Green arrow. Aslan. Oh! C. E. U. K. Canada. One new one. E. A. C. I am Superman. Wait, something feels wrong. Um, oh, of course, here we go. Sword audience. All right, enough screwing around. Let's get one Jack out of his packaging with the help of Betsy over here. Wait, hold on. Sorry, wait, just a second. Something's not right here. Okay. <laughs> No, that's not right. I tried something, maybe. Raid Shadow Legends. Cheap goddamn knife. Maybe? Okay, let's do it. Here we are again with one jack out of the packaging. Indulge me, okay? And I was thinking that maybe he'd just be a straight up use of Forlom, but there's actually a few other little nuances going on here. Again, we're not gonna spend too much time on him because he is effectively reuse, but we are gonna go ahead and focus on the differences a little bit more. So here we are looking at One Jack's face, and yep, it's pretty much he's just the exact same head sculpt as Forlom. I mean, he got that good looking Gan design, which was the alien that inspired this version of Protocol Droid, looking really sharp. And one of the best things about it, it is mildly translucent under the paint, which means that you almost have this sort of shimmery green when you get really close to those big old insectoid eyes right there. In fact, I went ahead, um, remember in the uh, Dead Man review when I threw LEDs all over the place to see how translucent plastics would go. Well, I brought in a white to sort of see what it would do over here. Ooh, you see what's doing right there? That looks really cool. So yeah, you could definitely tell not only is this head hollow, but it also has those translucent eyes. So you could probably do something really crafty there. I've also got some green. One thing I was considering is I know Gundam releases these little LED modules that are much smaller than this, but I was thinking I could cut out a little bit in the back and shove a module on the back of the head that can have glowing eyes whenever I want. So I'm going to think about that workshop it a bit, and if I do that, I'll release a short or something like that, but 
Oh my god, yeah. You know what? That LED thing needs to happen. That's too cool. He did glow quite a bit in the Obi-Wan Kenobi show. So that's something I'm definitely considering. Down to the torso, things get pretty plain paint-wise, but in comparison to Forlom, he's supposed to look a lot more pristine for the little that we get of him. But yeah, you get your usual um, uh, six-pack design. Not really six pack design. I don't know. <laughs> what would you call this? Again, Gand Anatomy is a little bit different. They have that really neat looking C-3PO circular design and the core looking really cool. Off to the back, again, more of that 3PO looking aesthetic. But of course, the main difference here is you have this very neat looking Chewbacca bandolier done in red and black. My favorite color palette. I really like how sharp that is. Everything here looks very crispy and new, which is something that I'm okay with. Uh, we don't know a whole lot of history behind this droid. I even checked out Wikipedia to see if, oh, maybe there's, like, um, a Star Wars encyclopedia, one of those heralded, like, 120-page textbooks that gave you some deep lore about this guy. And at the moment, no, we don't get a whole ton more when we get outside of the show, except that he was, of course, thought to be Forlom in the trailers. Then we got the merch and we realized, nope, he just happens to be one jack! Off to the arms, same arms that we've been getting with most Protocol Droid releases. Um, we've seen these arms evolve a little bit over time. When he first got C-3PO, it was pretty much a, a static, unarticulated piece. But by this point now, they... Uh, they are able to articulate with some hydraulics, kind of hindering them a bit, but honestly, they don't, never bothered me too much. I think this is just the right balance between screen accuracy and um, articulation. I think it's just right. I, I don't think I'd prefer any other way, to be honest with you. You can see we do have a little bit of paint deco. We got some gold at the hydraulics in the front and back, respectively, looking really sharp. And you also have some articulated hands. Nothing changed here. But one thing I did want to highlight is on this one, you do have a little bit of an extra mold piece. I don't know what this is. Um, I think maybe I'd have to watch the show again. Perhaps this is a hollow communicator that he used to get the bounty from Reva to go after Obi-Wan. I'm really not too sure. Then again, it could be a restraining bolt of sorts. Again, we don't know a whole lot of story behind this guy, but that's kind of what adds to the fun. Down to the legs, not much more interesting. You've seen these legs before if you've ever held a Black Series Protocol Droid, mainly 3PO or Forlom. But the only difference here that we do get is these little holster bits that are glued right on, tacked right onto the side of the thighs. And they look pretty good. I haven't tested these out yet, but... Let's go ahead and do that. So as for his only two accessories, they are pretty much identical, but as you can see, they are flipped. They each have this scope off to the side and then flip them around. Yeah, pretty much are cut from the same cloth. Now, I guess I'll start with seeing how these blasters fit in his hands. I don't think I've seen these before. They remind me mostly of, um, I think CIS wielded these, if I'm correct, the droids. Uh, but anyhow, let's go ahead, and I have no doubts that this will fit into his right hand just fine, looking really good. Um, this articulates up and down, a uh, little spoiler for the articulation session here. Um, as for the left, I'm not too sure, because again, this is ba more based off the four configuration of protocol droid parts. So that means this hand is not trigger specific. So let's get this one and just see how it slots in. Um, I'm not too sure about the tension. Um, no, it's pretty tight. It holds it well. But yeah, one thing that I was aware of going in is there is no trigger finger. So you're going to want to go ahead and get yourself an exacto blade and cut that out. I'll do that at some point. I'm not going to use Betsy. I think that would be overkill for the figure and me. I'd probably lose a few digits of my own in the process. Process. Looking pretty damn solid. He's a pretty cool figure. Not a requirement for any collection by any means, but for me, yeah, I'll take any LOM unit any day. He looks really good. I forgot to mention the really nice wire work. It's also differently colored from Forlom, so that's very beautifully done. Now let's go ahead and pop these blasters out of the hands and see how this holster system works. One thing I didn't consider is perhaps the scope will mean a difference between which one they go inside, so I'll have to assume if the scope is on this side of the figure, then this blaster should be allotted to this holster here. So I don't know... Oh, you literally just slide it up from the top. It's... That simple. I kind of like how minimalistic the holsters look, but deceptively so. They actually go in pretty tight. 
Let's um, straighten out the arms a little bit as we give it a wobble test. Uh, nope, nothing's falling out. That's pretty great. Okay, so we can also have them single wielding. They got one in the holster if you prefer. Um, yeah, very cool. I like this figure a lot. Again, not a whole lot to stare at, not a whole lot of new, but the little that is here helps to justify the now stock price. If you're paying scalper, eh, definitely not, but now he's affordable. Don't know why that is. Maybe it's because of the lukewarm reception to the show in general, which I personally enjoyed, but hey, I get a new bounty hunter droid. <laughs> not complaining here. Articulation, I can't imagine it's adult at all different from Forlom as we got him in the past, but you have a little bit of tilt, you have some forward, some back, you've got all the rotation that you could ever want. As for the shoulders, they swivel around, and it's really neat how these arms are kind of inside of that shoulder sculpt right there. Um, so they can hinge up um, an okay mount, not quite 90, and he does have a swivel at the bicep, which doesn't hurt at all. Um, again, again, the ankle, sorry, pff, the elbow joint's a little bit off uh, because of that hydraulic system, but I don't mind that it's a little bit stuck there. Again, protocol droids are kind of just supposed to be here. They're not meant to be assassins or bounty hunters as this guy is. And then as for the hands, you get swivel on both, then you have down and up on the right trigger hand. As for the left gripping hand, that goes in and out. Once more, get an exacto. You can get a trigger finger there, no problem. On the torso, you get, I think it's a ball joint, but let's go ahead and test that out. Not really a ton forward, but you do get a little bit of back. You have some minor tilt and you get some swivel, although it does get a little bit stuck. I'd be a little bit concerned about some paint rub happening at the wires, but I'm probably not gonna use that joint anyway, so I'm not too worried about that. On the legs, they kick out um, much better than a protocol droid probably deserves, but you do have some thigh swivel right there. You can hear the joints cracking a little bit as I'm moving them around for the first time. As for the knees, they go back to about there, not 90 at all, that's all right. And then as for the ankles, they go back, they go forward, and then you get your rocker. Very, very good. This guy's fun, I like him a lot. To kick off size comparisons, here he is next to the Black Series Forlom, a brother from another mother, bored. Honestly, I don't mind that this guy has less pain. I mean, for me, obviously, Forlom is the superior figure of these two, but it's kind of cool to have the exact same droid model, one pristine, then one showing its history. Like, if we go ahead and pull up Forlom for a bit, um, I don't think I did any custom paint at all on this guy. This is how he came right out of the box. He has a lot of that wear and tear. He's got some rust. He just looks absolutely fantastic, but again, that's not to say that necessarily this figure is bad. It's just this is is another LOM droid and a different state of its production. This guy came right off the line and he died shortly after. This guy though, he's got some decades behind him. Now let's go ahead and expand our assortment with more scum and villainy. Over here we have my lightly customized Return of the Jedi Deluxe Boba Fett. Then we also have Zuckus, and other exclusive this time from Amazon. And this is the species that of course influenced the four LOM design. Honestly, these two bounty hunters are so underrated. I really hope you get more about them because this guy's really interesting. He's mildly force sensitive from what I can tell. And as for Forlum, he has a long, long running history of being bosom buddies with Zuckus. So I don't know, that would have been kind of cool to see as an animated show or one of the live action shows like they're doing now. Continuing on, we have the absolutely craptacular IG-88. This is the archive version from Black Series, but naturally you're gonna wanna go ahead and opt for the IG-11 that we got from Mafex over here, who is definitely better scaled and everything. Actually, since I last Last pulled IG-88 out for size comparisons. <laughs> I actually ripped off the rubber bits that were at the elbows because they were totally deteriorated. So I'm like, you know what? Screw it. Let's just rip them off. <laughs> Whatever. They were so bad. But then, of course, we have Muck Muck because you know how these reviews go, right? I always wake up at the wrong hours of the day. This is getting out of hand. Now there's two of them. <laughs> Once again, not a whole ton to say about this plastic iteration of a very short-lived character from a not 100% loved TV show from Disney+. Plus. But yeah, if you've ever held for long, you pretty much know what One Jack's about. Pretty much the only difference is the paint, the blasters, the blaster holsters, and also that little doodad that he's got on his wrist, which is actually the only surprise I got out of this. I didn't even know it was there. I'll show you again that little guy right there. Like, can you picture just a little bit of the holograph going up right there? Like, 
tell him to do Order 66 or whatever. Yeah, we don't know the history of this guy. Maybe he killed some Jedi in the past. He's just a really solid figure that I've always kind of wanted, but again, when he released, the scalpers got a hold of him first. I'm like, you know, for long, never, classic never goes out of style. But then one day, kind of saw a whim, I was curious. I'm like, hmm, I wonder what the state of one Jack is right now. And then I noticed, wait, whoa, he's stock price now? Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm getting him. I don't know why the price dipped down. I... I mean, I guess I do know why. It's kind of a combination of factors. First of all, it came from a show that wasn't totally loved by everyone, let alone not does even everyone have access to the show. Second, Walmart exclusive. He was scalper at first, so that probably shut a lot of people off right out of the gate. And third, I mean, he's basically Forlom, just differently painted with different weapons. And for some people, that's not enough to justify buying the same figure again. But for me, again, I'm a sucker for killer droids. I love my bounty hunters and I love Forlom. It's kind of cool to get his other cousin from a different canon, basically. So I have no issues with this figure. It was just a matter of the price dipping down, and this is kind of a special case. You don't see that happen often with exclusives. That's pretty much all there is to say. I like this figure a lot. If you want him, go out and get him. He's right on eBay waiting just for you, still mint in box for a very good price. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed or you're new here, then please, as per usual, be sure to like, like comment, and, and subscribe. Or I shall inject a dose of hallucinogens so you may see our point of view. Now, where did I go wrong? All those degrees and for what? Hope you're having a lovely search here a week. Thanks for watching and I will see you all later. <laughs> Continuing on, we have the crap tascular. Huh? I'm kind of wishing that Disney would go ahead and add their stories to the canon a little bit. Can we just get a bounty hunter centric TV show of like the original six from Empire? Please, can we get that? I think everybody wants that, just no one's saying it. And then you can also have that 3PO looking so. so the, the, the circle round and round and go. I don't know how to talk English anymore.